Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at creative macro photography using stuff and things we can find around the house to get pictures like this. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Leo. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. As you've just seen, we're going to be doing a bit of creative macro photography. It's something I really love. The pictures that you can come up with um, um extraordinary. Now, what is creative macro or what is creative photography? Everybody is creative. You remember when you was a kid, a child, back as a child, and you had all your action figures and dollies and you you were playing. That is creative. And that's what we've got still in our brain, but it's at the back of our brain because we don't use it so often. So what I do is I tend to like to represent and, uh, and think out the box and play around with my photography, getting it arty, arty feeling, but using something totally different to get what I want and to get the pictures I want sort of thing. Creativeness is what we've all got and it's a good way of keeping your brain active because we, like I said, when we was all kids, we always used to play with dollies and things like that and, you know, action figures and, you know, we used to come up with some creative ideas when we was a kid, Lego, playing with Lego and in the bath with your toys and, you know, and we've all still, this is what we need back into photography. Well, this is what I'm putting back into my photography and it's helping my mind think of other things other than the bad things that causes me anxiety. That's why I do a lot of, you know, arty, artistic feeling. What I'm gonna be using today, well, you know, you can use anything. This is a, a scourer, you know, you pull some of this apart, put some water drops on it, and you've got a fantastic bit of art, and you know, add a bit of light, you don't need flashes, just use lights and you shine it on, and you've, you've got what you want. Also, you know, like I said, we got these stupid, these little stupid Lego figures. If I was to put this flower in this man's hand there, like that, uh, you know, <laughs> it's another story. I could imagine this man standing there is a miniature man, yeah, and I could imagine water drops hitting him, you know, and he's using the flower as an umbrella, walking along. See, this is my creativity. This is the creativity style in me coming out, and this is what creative photography is. Now, of recently, I've been playing a bit of Yuli Geller, should I say, Yuli Geller, whatever his name is, and I've been bending forks and using forks for different things. Now, all these are is kitchen forks. I got these from Tesco. I got four for, I think it was £1.50 or something like that, because you know, my wife doesn't like me bending her, her forks up like you've probably seen already. This is some I've been playing with and, you know, just general bending. But today, I want to do something more, and I want to create some playful, something playful. Now, I'm going to quickly show you how to do this. All this, all I've been doing is getting a pair of pliers, yeah, and imagining my hand, and just bending my fingers and see what I want. Now, with this one here, yeah, I've actually bent it to sit as if it's holding a flower. We get in like that. So it's sort of, you know, it's bent like that. So it's like mimicking it, it mimic holding a flower. And I think that, that can give, that's a nice picture. And all it is, like I say, is a bit of Yuri Geller. Just get it at the end, imagine your finger, so that's your big one. I'm just gonna bend it round once, and bend it round twice. Then we've got your bend already, there you go. And that's gonna actually stand up there, easy enough. I'm gonna bend the next knuckle. What I tend to do is bend the top one, and bend that one. Now, you can take your time and do what you want with them. That's going to be my main finger, so I fancy bending that like that. I'm going to bend this one in, like that. And as you can see now, that gives me an hooked feeling. 
So it looks like it's dragging. But the one I've been thinking about is more playful. And I'm imagining somebody flicking a marble. So that's the look I'm going to go for and try and mimic today. Now, we ain't gonna use no mad flashes today. We're gonna use a flash torch. Some silver foil and some more good old backgrounds and that's all I'm going to be using today along with my Canon 7D because I can't find my 750D trigger remote. I could actually put on timer I suppose but we'll see how we get on with that one. So there's nothing really odd about this today but it's like I said it's using the imagination. So I think we can do it because there's lots of different pictures we can do with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my setup so you can all see it and then we'll get down to business. This setup is so simple, anybody can do it, a bit of tabletop photography. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use and why I'm going to use it and explain the differences and the benefits for it. So first thing is, I've got my foil. This is gonna be my base. This is gonna be a nice, dreamy looking base. It don't make no difference about the scratches or anything else or the ripples because this actually gives you the textures. The next thing is, is my trusty cards. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of these cards and all I'm going to do is roll it up. The only reason I'm rolling it up is for, so it stands up. That's simple. Simple as done. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce my fork as at an angle I like. Yeah, I'm going to pull it fairly forward because I'm going to be using a fairly high F stop to try and get most of it in. I think it'll look better that way, should I say. Yeah, like that. And the next thing I'm going to be using is my marble, if it don't roll away again, is my marble. And all I'm going to do is put the marble at the end of the finger to symbolise the flicking movement, and hopefully this should be all right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually have a look through now the camera to see how it looks. To be fair, looking through the camera at the minute, this is sort of what I'm after. I really am happy with it. As you can see at the bottom here, yeah, where the shadows and casting, this is absolutely perfect. And like I say, I've got the marble at the bottom there. Might be able to do a bit more. Because, like I say, I want to simplify, simple, blah, 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 simplify it being flicked. The only thing that's worrying me in a minute is the light, because it looks a bit harsh. So I'm going to have to move the light around a little bit more to get what I want. As you can see, if we add the light, a bit more light is getting highlights and blown out. But if I turn the light away, I'm getting a lot better feel. Now, we ain't really worried about the background because I can cut the background, I can crop the background out. So I'm quite happy with how that looks, but that's the sort of shot I want to go for. And that's how easy it is to set up with a simple foil, one of the backgrounds, a fork and a marble. And that looks to me looks like a, an amazing shot and very creative. So you can see my settings as clear as day there. 140 for the second, f4.5, ISR 100. The back of the camera does not lie. That's why I always like to put my settings up. So let's take a picture and see what we get with that setup I've got. And there you go. Quite like that. To me, it's a little bit light. But the way I've got the light, it it, it looks light, should I say, on the screen of my fat whether that I'm recording on. But on the back of the camera, it looks a lot darker. But I reckon I can just tone that down a bit. But as you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. But how about now if I change one of my backgrounds and see what we get, because that's with an orange. Take a quick shot, a couple more shots messing around. We never know what we're going to get. I ain't even looking at these. But now I'm going to change my background. And let's see what we get. How about that dreamy feeling? Absolutely gorgeous. I love that 100%. And all that is, is 
one of yet again one of my backgrounds I used. So they're so simple, but they're absolutely beautiful. Right, you've seen the back of there. I'm just gonna show you my settings one more time. There you go. Let's uh, let's see, look at some more pictures and have a bit of a roundup. So you've seen me take the shots. I hope you've enjoyed it all. It's been absolutely fantastic it's going to get back of this camera once again after being so long. So I'm a bit rusty, but I will get back. The reason why I'm using foil is there's two sides to foil. Yeah, you've got one mega shiny side and one that's a bit dull. The dull side is absolutely brilliant because it reflects what you want, the colours. You know, it casts the nice colours over it, but with the creases in it, it gives more detail and more character and it gives you something to your picture. So you never be scared to give the crumple up before you take the shot because it gives it more detail. As long as you don't use the shiny side, because the shiny side just doesn't work, it just seems to blow your eyelids out. But this side seems to work absolutely fantastic. Simple things yet again, but these cards, these cards make absolutely brilliant. You know, you've seen it back of the camera. The camera don't lie. It's the settings. My settings, like I keep telling everybody, may change. Your lighting's different to mine. All you really need is a lamp, simple as, or one of these torches and just keep flashing it over. You're not gonna get the best shot straight away. You've gotta keep practicing, 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 moving it around a little bit more, moving your light, twitching it around, just that touch more, because sometimes that little twitch can mean make a big difference. I, some of my best pictures I've taken have been taken by mistake, believe it or not. So I just show us. Yeah, my camera, yeah, my 750D is totally playing up at the moment. This is the reason I've been working so long and I've taken two jobs on because it's just not doing what I want. The, the button on the wheel, the toggle wheel on the top is absolutely playing up. And one minute it's taking at F2, the next minute it's trying to be taken at F12. So it's, it's hard to try and balance it all. As you know, just on my film, it don't stay on no more. It keeps going off quick. I think I've rather done it, but there again, I've been taking, I've probably taken probably a million pictures with the camera now. And I've looked after it over the years, after a few years, and it was second hand when he had it. So I've had to sadly upgrade to a new camera. But you won't be seeing this camera because I'm still, you're going to be using my 750D. The one I've bought will be filming. So <laughs> there we go. It's a bit of an odd sick circumstance, but I had to go and get something that I could film with because my 7D is mainly what I film with, and I believe it does a trick for me. Cheap as chips, it works, but there you go. It all breaks down in the end. Like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm gonna put a couple of pictures up at the end to show you. You've already seen a couple, but I'm gonna put a few more up. And I hope you've enjoyed today. Please do me one favor. Please, please, please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to it. Please tell your family, your aunties, your mums, your nans, your granddads, I really need a big support at the minute. I need a big push to try and drive me, drive my YouTube channel back up. As you know, without driving it back up, I can't get no farther because YouTube pays peanuts and I can't afford nothing else with losing two jobs and just gaining one. So, but none of that. Forget all that. Anyway, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Please look after yourselves. Get them cameras out. Get them dusted off. Stay safe. And until my next one, happy snapping.